So we'll uh, just begin with obviously the big event tonight. Uh, what are you hoping, Mr. Leader, to hear from the president? I hope he would um, do something different than he hasn't done the first 100 days. Actually talk about working together to solve Americans' problems. I, I wish he wouldn't, if you look about how much money he is spending, I mean, there's a new report out right now that we all think about the New Deal, about how large that was and how big that increased America's debt. Well, this is five times larger than the New Deal, what he's proposed, without even giving us a budget yet. So let's focus on getting people back to work, back to school, back to health, and back to normal. I think that's where we'd find bipartisanship. Now, history is on your side right now. Um, in two years, there's a decent chance that you are Speaker McCarthy. Are there things that you have your eye on right now in terms of legislation that you might work two years from now to roll back? Well, there's a number of things we would, but we want to work on the problems right now. We want to secure our border. We've got a major crisis created by the executive orders of this president. We want to save our small businesses, and we can't wait two years for that. And then what we want to make sure is getting the kids back in school. The number of people that have lost out on um, that educational entire year, um, that's really a foundation for their future and their success generations from now. You can work with Democrats to do that now, can you? Yeah, we can. We hope we will, and we hope we can. Uh, I'll, Republicans will work with anybody that's willing to work on solutions. Unfortunately, right now, um, the way that the, the House has been structured by members not having to come here and still get paid, bills not going through committee, removing the opportunity for the minority party, something that's never happened in Congress before, to actually have an amendment on the floor. Those are all things that have has fostered uh, an inability to have bipartisanship on legislation. Those are things that we'd reverse right away. I mean, talking about bills that don't even get markups, right? The, um, you know, the COVID relief package. Trillions of dollars. Yeah, so I'm wondering, I mean, you're part of leadership. Does leadership in this town, in this moment, have too much power? Yes, by far. Including you? Well, I'm in the minority, so it's not that much power, but um, yeah, by far. I mean, think about it. Leadership can, can control the votes, where people can proxy the votes to them, so they have more than one vote. It doesn't go through committee, so those people, members who have expertise in the issues, don't get to talk about it, don't get to offer amendments, don't get to discuss it, and it just comes directly to the floor, so you have no other option. Um, I mean, that to me is too much power in one hands because every member represents more than 750,000 voices that need to be heard on any legislation going forward. All right, I want to pivot to um, the GOP retreat in Florida. Chairwoman yeah. Cheney made some news. Um, she publicly has disagreed with you about this January 6th investigation, um, the makeup of it, and the scope. Uh, she thinks it should be focused on January 6th exclusively. You've publicly said you want it to be broader. Uh, to look at violence, political violence over the summer. Why is she wrong? Why shouldn't it just be focused on January 6th? That's what we're investigating, right? Because Good Friday, you had Officer Evans killed by politically motivated individual just less than a month ago. And you don't want to look at that? We've had, we've had members in this body shot. You don't want to look at any of that? You have a Democrat leader of the Appropriations Committee who says he will not do the um, funding for security unless you have the report back. So why would you want to do it part way? But Mr. Leader, on 9-11, before that, after that, we've had terrorist attacks. We were just focusing this investigation on 9-11. It was, a, it was a, a pivotal point in the nation's history. Wouldn't you do that now for January 6th? Well, this whole point that's going on, you just had Good Friday, you had a whole summer a political uprising where people were harmed, buildings were burned. I'd rather solve the entire problem instead of make something political. But isn't it different that this is the seat of power and it was breached in a way that no one had expected? I mean, this seems like a, an important enough well, thing. Well, I'm talking about this is the same place that got breached by a car that killed an officer less than a month ago. This is the same city that got breached that shut the city down and the buildings and others that shut down ours. So it, it all comes into one. I, I, I don't understand why someone wants to play politics with this. Okay, uh, where is the um, cooperation right now in terms of how you set this thing up? You and Well, Speaker what's interesting is I proposed this back on January 13th. The speaker wanted to have it very one-sided, so uh, I've never had a discussion. The speaker has not reached out to me to have a discussion about this. This is too important to try to negotiate in the press. This is where four leaders should sit down, 
here's the problem. Let's create the structure to find the solution. But these, these I guess, uh, uh, concessions, as they've been called, are circulating in, in the media. You, you, you haven't had any conversations yet with the speaker? No, she's never talked to me about it. I've sent her letters. Um, I've requested. Um, even the 9-11 Commission, those on the Republican and Dem side, have criticized the speaker for the partisanship that she has played along this. And you don't want to have that happen. This is too serious of a situation. Um, I want to get to the bottom of it. Do you think that in 2024, Donald Trump should be the nominee on the Republican side? Look, that's a long way away. You don't even know if the president said he'll run again. Would you support him if he did? If the president is the nominee, I'll support him. But um, I'm looking to make sure we win the House. And I haven't heard the president say he's running. I think you've been asked this, but I just want to get it on record. Can you unequivocally say the election was done fairly, that it was not stolen in any way? Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. Um, I want to ask you about the, the southern border. You, you've taken trips down there. Uh, you've seen it yourself. I know you've been critical of the administration uh, in terms of its handling. Uh, what do you think should be done right now for the thousands of minors who've crossed, who've claimed asylum, that are here right now? I'm not talking about those that may come later, but those that are here right now. What would you say? Well, the first thing, the president has to reverse the executive orders he did to create this. Um, he's created a real challenge. You've got thousands upon thousands of unaccompanied children. What are we going to do? How are we going to deal with that? He's got more people coming. Well, that's my question. With a promise, yeah. Well, the first thing he has to do is reverse the executive orders. Remain in Mexico, um, have asylum decided before someone comes in. It, it is not right at any time in America to come here illegally. You're going to have more than a million people come across that will not get stopped. We are a very gener generous nation, and we should be. Um, have a million people come here legally. But what's, happening, but what's happening now is something much worse. There's human trafficking. There's fentanyl coming across. The cartels have become so powerful by moving people. But we're catching people who are on the terrorist watch list. And they're not from Central America. They're from Yemen. Why are they coming to America? What do they have planned? Who are they meeting with? I just want That's to a real you. serious problem. I, I want to press you, Mr. Leader, on the kids that are here now, only because this is clearly the administration's problem, but it's also going to be... Uh, I, every, I would find their families and make sure these children get back to their families safely. Care for them now. None of them are being tested for COVID. They're being kept in places that Democrats before thought was unhealthy. No one's commenting about that today. Even the person that the president put in charge of this, the vice president, won't even go to see them. Um, I just lastly, uh, I, I want to ask you if, you if you can respond to something that critics have been saying uh, about you more recently, that um, you've been back and forth on, on your January 6th responses. Never. In which way? Name one way. Uh, they, were, they were saying that you criticized uh, the president and, and tried to hold him accountable and then more recently have tried to um, no, change. No, I've been very clear about it. I criticized the president and the administration that I thought things could have gone faster to come up here to stop. I did not believe the president should uh, be um, impeached. I thought that was wrong. It was political, political in nature. I've been very clear in what's going forward. The only people that have been polit playing politics with this has been the Speaker of the House, the way she continues to run this Capitol, not allowing people in, um, not willing to look at how Officer Evans, by a politically motivated, um, religious-based individual, killed him with a car in this body in just a month ago. Why wouldn't you want to investigate that? Why would you ever want to have that happen again is beyond me. I guess I'll leave it with Tim Scott, the choice tonight to, to respond. Uh, why do you think that choice was made? Why is he a, a good uh, rebut to whatever the president I think is? Tim Scott is an amazing individual. Um, I think you look at from his upbringing, where his family has come from, it really tells the story about why America is exceptional. It really tells the opportunity that you have in this nation. And I think it would inspire people for the next generation that a more perfect union continues to strive to improve each and every day. All right. Thank you, Mr. Leader. Anything else you want to add before we let you go? Nope. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys.